Okay, well, I'm John Turmel, and um, I started a fast a while ago because I got interested in the health benefits of fasting. And uh, I forget why I started it, but uh, I had read a book on the powers of fasting, supplemented by uh, Miracle Water, and uh, I decided to give it a try. And yet, after seven days, I was in Ottawa, and they have a Louis pizza there, and it's a tradition. And so I went and had a pizza on my seventh day. And then, 15 days later, I went to a Polish wedding. What am I supposed to do? So I broke my fast again. Well, anyway, I'm not a fanatic, but I wanted to see what would happen. So I lost a lot of weight. I haven't been hungry. And uh, but what got my attention was an article a while back in August by Richard Doughty. And he said, I reversed my diabetes in just 11 days on a starvation diet. Wow. There's another report in there about a whole group who all reversed their diabetes in eight weeks of restricted calorie diet. So basically, it explains that when you go on a starvation diet, after four or five days, your cells start to cannibalize themselves. Now, what's it going to cannibalize first, a brain cell or a fat cell? What's it going to cannibalize first, heart, lung cell or a tumor cell? Well, anyway, they basically found that after four or five days, you start autolyzing, consuming your least valuable cells. Now, probably I started because I would, had read another report on Fukushima, the nuclear accident in Japan, which uh, two and a half years ago spewed a ton of radiation around the world. Um, what, three, four days before the plume hit BC, Health Canada turned off their fallout detectors. They didn't want to scare you. And baby deaths tripled in BC. I caught the statistics and I published it, but I'm the only person in the country who noticed that I printed out the printout when they announced we will no longer be sampling the nuclear fallout as, you, as frequently as we used to. And my question would be, well, how often will you still be sampling it? No answer. <laughs> they turned them off and baby deaths tripled. So, and I know we've been sucking up a lot since then. There was something like Seattle had 150 hot particles in April of that year per person. They measure it in about 10 cubic meters of air that we all breathe in a day and counted the hot particles and said, geez, everybody's breathing this in on the West Coast, a little less in after the Rockies, but still, we're still breathing all this stuff in. And uh, I'd done a video earlier about uh, pet fish dead because I ask people who have pet fish ponds, say, any of your fish still alive? And they go, how do you know they're all dead? Well, how do I know they're all dead? Where do you think the nuclear fallout comes down in the rain? And where do you think rain adds up in ponds and bird baths and swimming pools, I suppose? I like to joke that if you see the fish belly up in the pond, how long before the kids are belly up in the pool? So yeah, bad times coming. And we're all ingesting these fallout particles that are probably blowing out stop switches in our cells and causing tumors to grow. And therefore, maybe we ought to try autolyzing them before they get very big. Now, have you had a lot of friends, older guys, get cancer and die in 30 days? You know, been to a lot of funerals lately? <clears throat> Miscarriages in the family? Surprising stuff? You know, people who are pregnant one week and then a month later they're not anymore? What's going on? So, bad times and maybe starvation can do something. A starvation diet about cancer. So, now, yes it can as a matter of fact. Fasting kills cancer and boosts immunity in seven days. Well, actually five. It says where basically certain chemical reactions really switch around in your body after five days when the autolysis starts. Now this guy here on his diet fascinated me because he actually had 800 calories a day. He'd have a you know, nutritious uh, broth and with veggies and some shakes, 800 calories a day. And yet he cured himself in 11 days of 800 calories a day. 
Well, what could you do if you didn't have any calories a day? Hmm. Well, anyway, in his report, he's talking about how after one day, <coughs> hunger was never far away. Always hungry. Has anybody here gone on a short fast? Pretty bad after two, three days. You're pretty darn hungry, aren't you? No. So, <laughs> it's not easy. After the two, three but anyway, no, I found the first two or three days were bad. Yeah. Then after that, yeah, bad. yes, that's right. Oh, without connecting. That's, right. that's what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. okay. He's good. saying yeah. hunger's never far away. <laughs> that's right. And he says that by day four, he was feeling weak, having trouble getting upstairs. By day six, he's got he's in a bit of a daze. He's got four sweaters on. His fingers are turning numb. He's constipated. Well, that's what you get when you're eating something. I wasn't constipated. Nothing there to constipate. <laughs> But anyway, the point is, he suffered through this fast. And if you read about it and you go on the internet, I've just posted a whole bunch of them, people I've seen fasting. And they're going, oh, the first three, four days, I gotta get over it, you know. And after 10 days or like this in the bed, I'm feeling weak. And when they recommend going on fast, they always say, we're gonna bring you in and you gotta be monitored by a doctor. And we advise you to stay in bed while you lie there weak and you, you go through your starvation fast. So, now, I wanted to do the fast because starving the beast. Again, starve your cancer cells first. So, now, I'm a believer well, here's an interesting point I'm going to step to now. Quick step away. Did you know that in China they use stem cells to grow new teeth? Stem cells, the pluripotent kind, can regrow all sorts of tissues. Nerve tissues, skin tissues, blood tissues, everything. Pluripotent stem cells. And they grew brand new teeth with the enamel, with the pulp, with the nerve, with the everything. Now, don't tell me that's not amazing. Now, where'd they get the stem cells? Urine. Urine has pluripotent stem cells. Now, how many people have heard about peeing on a cut? What? Peeing on a cut. Peeing on a cut. Oh, and that, oh, okay, yeah. it, that, that peeing on a cut will cure, cure the cut like nothing else. Whatever, whatever, yes. Man of war, you know, stingray, whatever those things are, yes, yes. We've all heard those. What is it about urine that can heal a cut so there's no scars? I kept asking myself, what's special about this stuff? I knew that the kidneys picked up vitamins, minerals, hormones, enzymes, but this is the first I heard about stem cells. And all of a sudden it went bang! God, if you got a cut in there and you're throwing in pluripotent stem cells, that might explain why the nerves connect, why the vessel, blood vessels connect, why the flesh connects together. And <clears throat> the man who wrote the book, Urine Therapy, called it liquid flesh. What an apt name for a liquid with pluripotent stem cells in it. Wow. Now, urine is not a waste product. Ha, ha, ha. Um, now, just as milk is a nutritious product for babies captured by the mammaries out of the blood, urine is a nutritious product for adults captured out of the blood by the kidney. Nowhere near the dirt chute. Nothing dirty or pollutant can get in there. Now, there are some dead microphages being pushed out, yes. But my, and people say, well, now wait a minute now. Urine therapy means that you have to re-ingest your vitamins, minerals, hormones, enzymes, stem cells. Oh, did I mention they found pluripotent and DNA. Strands of DNA go through the kidney barrier right into the urine. Now they found this is extremely good because unlike trying to get stem cells and DNA out of the blood with thousands of all sorts of other components, pathogens, HIV, all this kind of stuff, in urine, HIV can't live. All these pathogens can't live. It's sterile. It's a thousandfold easier to get stem cells and DNA out of urine than it is out of blood. Wow! So that sort of explains why miracle water is so strong. Now, in his book, John Armstrong, quack doctor from 60, 80 years ago, first one, who rediscovered this new technique, his standard 
Treatment, diagnosis was, I don't care what ails you. I'm cutting off your food. I'm making you drink all your urine. Now, those were in the days before vitamin supplements. Therefore, the only other way to add extra nutrition into the body by someone who's fasting was for other people to massage their urine into the patient. And that way there would be extra nutrition for the patient to survive a long fast. He <coughs> talked about 48 days, 49 days, and the longest fast, 101 days. With nothing to sustain but urine. Drinking all your own and having others put in. Now, because of the advent of supplements and vitamins and minerals, on my fast, I haven't asked anybody to come and massage their urine into me, okay? Mind you, I should ask my girlfriend, but even she wouldn't, uh, you know, yeah. she said to me, down. So, but the point is, we may not need to go, I always thought if I got cancer, how am I going to get someone to do this for me, you know? It, most people would be freaked out, you know, am I going to, here's a way of saving myself and I'm going to die? So, and I figure, boy, if I could organize a network of people who are ready to help each other when they needed it in this way. But then it dawned on me. Here it comes. Maybe, Here it comes. Maybe <laughs> vitamins, minerals, and all this stuff you get in the supplements may be enough. So I started my fast mainly on the hope that I could prevent any small Fukushima cancers from developing. Just pure prevention to see how long I could last. And so I started drinking all my PB. And after a day or two, it's literally completely tasteless. Fresh out of the chute, you don't get the ammonia for, for, for at least two, three hours, okay? It's, until then, you can put it on a desk and just sip it like your regular drink, you know? And I know it freaks you out, but it's not dirty. It tastes nothing. You get used to it after a while. Now, I'll tell you my first miracle, though. I had a root canal. Anybody ever have a root canal infection before? Uncurable, right? You have to have an operation. So I have one of these operations books for a thousand dollars 15 years ago. And four days before, I'd already been doing urine therapy. I said, you know, I really haven't given this a test. So I started four days on weekends sitting on my computer working and I swished, flossed and swished, 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 swished the whole two days. Now I was taking two Tylenol every 12 hours for the pain. And if I ever missed my 12 hours and it started throbbing, it'd be all 15 minutes of throbbing before it went away. So I was really worried about testing to see. After two days of swishing, now don't forget, when you get a root canal operation, the infection is then spread to all the little roots, all the little canals in there, which is why so many people die when they operate on their teeth with those kind of infections. I swished for two days with my miracle water and my kidney milk, I like to call it. And then I stopped the Tylenol, I went to see what happened. The pain was gone. Wow! I disinfected a root canal infection without needing an operation. A miracle in medical history. Okay, so I went and did, wrote about it, of course, tell everybody. If you go look at my videos at YouTube, look for PP power for poor people. Because it always <laughs> breaks my heart to think that some poor guy is sitting there with a root canal infection he could cure in two days, suffering and he can't afford Tylenol. Can you imagine what that must be like? You can't afford Tylenol and you've got a root canal and no health insurance. So anyway, PP power for poor people is out there, three videos. So I've now started my fast. I'm a believer. I've seen other examples. And the other great one, back to cancer for a minute, is that the other article here about inflammation says that all cancers always arise when you start with inflammation around a wound of some kind. Now, my mother, when she died, had Raynaud's disease. And Raynaud's disease is loss of blood to the extremities until you, you get gangrene and the Parts, the extremities get chopped off, and that's an ugly end. And uh, three, four, five years ago, she got it, and the toes went black, and the leg got big, and they chopped off her leg. Well, three years later, starts again. Toes get black, legs double, well, maybe more, four times the size if it's double, you know, it's squared to function, you know. And we said, we've got to try this urine therapy, see what happens. So we stuck her on a fast with only your urine. And on the fifth day in the morning, all of the inflammation was gone. Wow. And then later that day she died. Doctor says the poison from the gangrene probably went up and killed her. 
So, operation was excess, even if the patient died. But I watched and I saw, I saw the inflammation disappear. You know what I mean? I saw what I considered a miracle. A foot all black with gangrene and of course the rest is all swollen and all of a sudden, poof, back to normal. Well, it's pretty tough for me not to be a believer. So I decide I'm going to go on my fast. Just see how long I can last. Well, after, I don't feel any discomfort. Don't forget, I'm chugging it all. Because I know that I've heard you don't feel hunger. If you, When you put your digestion to sleep, like she said, 60, I used to say 70% of your, of your immune system is to fight off digestion toxins. And if you shut it down, everything else is freed up to concentrate on the other stuff. So I shut mine down completely. And I didn't go through any of this guy's hunger. Now, Dell did too. Dell is finishing his ninth week of a fast. Seven. Nine. If I went 13, you're at nine, because you started at four. Sorry, okay? He lost count. He lost count. He's at nine. He's, he's already lost 20 pounds. I lost 42, because he nibbles and I don't. Okay? <laughs> but the point is, so anyway, and then, so I tried it. I'm not hungry. Now I go to Ottawa special event. What the heck? I, you know, this is only a fun test. It's not doing no notes, not monitoring or anything. So I had my pizza, and then the sec. So over the next twelve weeks, I had eleven meals, and then to celebrate my twelve weeks, I went out that night and had another one. So now I've had twelve in thirteen weeks, and I could go out tonight, so I'd have thirteen in fourteen. So I always got one meal less than a week. And they were big meals though. So Bruce joked, maybe that's packing enough in one meal for the whole week. And you know, I'm starting to think that might be right. Because thousands of years ago when we were in the savannah, we used to kill something once in a while, and the rest of the time we starved. Unless they knew about miracle water. Now, after 28 days, I'm at the Brantford. It was funny, it started on a Wednesday, and here I am on the fourth week. So on my 28th day, I gave a report to the Brantford Inventors Club, explaining all of the stuff I just did here. And then I did another report, 35 days. And then I did another report, 40 days, saying, hey, if I can do it, Jesus could do it too. Right? <laughs> 40 days in the desert. What's hard if he knew about Shimbav Shimbavu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is from India. Now, I'm a believer that the crown prince of the Jews wasn't working in a carpentry shop, but he was sent off with his trust fund to go study in India. Shivambu. Shivambu, okay. Where they knew about urine therapy. Why do you think they worship cows? I mean, cow shit, that's her fuel. Cow piss, that's her medicine. And they look at us and they go, you eat cows? Come on, wake up, these are valuable machines, medicine and fuel, you eat them? So anyway, Jesus came back, I figure he knew. Now don't forget the Bible jokes about Jesus and the followers being drunkards and gluttons. Jesus was the biggest trust fund baby on the planet. After the Magi left him with all that gold and incense and myrrh, hey, 38% interest rates. How fast does your trust fund grow? <laughs> he was one rich dude when he and when he came back, maybe he was a little paunchy, you know. 40 days in the desert, drop a few pounds before the coronation. You know, that's what I figure might have happened. <laughs> Neat stunt, right? Watch me, I'm gonna go in the desert 40 days, see you suckers. And he comes back looking great! Hey, I'm 90 days! I'm looking better than I ever have! He could have done it too! So then I did one at 50 days because Armstrong's records were 48 and 49, but I had seven meals. Then I did another one at 56. That was the second Branford's month meeting. Then I did one at 70, 10 weeks. And uh, then 84, 12 weeks at the Branford Club. After four weeks at Branford, eight weeks at Branford, 12 weeks at Branford, and this is the 13th week finished today at noon. So I'm on my 92nd day with 12 meals. Oh, I had a couple of eggs out there. But yeah, that was good. <laughs> One thing, <laughs> the taste buds, the brain, they're always tempted, okay? Oh, like, I, I got, I'll take chocolate. Would you know you eat a chocolate bar, you have a big bowel movement? Wow, who'd have believed it? You know, a chocolate bar? Give me brain. 
shouldn't be that big. But anyway, so, uh, am I finished? It? No, finally, let me finish the thing about P. University of Alberta, yes, came out with a study recently, said they wanted to analyze all the components in urine. They figured there might have been 50 or 100. They only analyzed for six or seven in their tests. 20 researchers took seven years to catalog 3,000 useful components in our urine. 3,000 useful components collected by our kidneys, manufactured by our bodies, for one tailor-made potent medicine. Now, people say, why would they make this great stuff to throw it out? Why is it being expelled if it isn't waste? And my answer is for topical use. You're in a submarine or a spaceship, and a little meteorite clicks and puts a hole in it. What do you do? You get up there, you patch the inside, then you get outside, you patch the outside, right? Mm -hmm. Well, can you imagine that God might have given us a way of sending the materials through the bloodstream to patch the inside, and then allowing you to send it to the outside to patch the outside? What's pluripotent stem cells? Makes you a believer in some kind of intelligent design, right? That they would have designed our bodies to do as well as a spaceship in getting the repair materials outside. So, once it's outside, if you don't need it to put on your sores, Madonna pees on her athlete's foot to get rid of it. You ever heard that story? Anyway, yeah, someone did. So my point is, there are so many stories about urine out there that when you tell people it's not a waste product, it's a paradigm shift. Now, when you tell them their lives depend on it, that they're never going to be able to sustain a long fast because you get cancer and it's going to be a race between you dying and you starving your cancer. So, the only thing I know of that's effective in general is autolysis, is the starvation of those cells because when healthy cells go into hunger, starvation, survival mode, they become more efficient which explains why these long lifers who want to go to 150 are living on severely restricted calorie diets. It seems the less you feed mice, the longer they live. Or God only gave you so much food to eat, and if you stuff it too fast, game over. And if you do it slowly, you last longer. So if these people can do that, if they're proving that caloric intake can do that and cause your cells to become more efficient and hunker down, while at the same time, cancer cells cannot. Cancer cells can't hunker down. They need more food all the time for their exponential growth or they die. So, I believed that this was the possible way of sustaining huge, long fasts like John Armstrong said in his book. And I just wanted to convince myself it was no bull when he talked about seven weeks, 49 days, and another guy, 101 days, that's 14 and a half weeks. Mind you, if I can go another four or five weeks with only one meal a week, I figure I'm pretty close. But I ain't got much fat left to autolyze. Pete, I've lost 42 pounds. But, and people say, wow, aren't you weak or anything? I'm saying, and did you not feel hungry? And I'm saying, when you're eating two quarter pounders of fat a day, how hungry can you be? <laughs> right? right? I've lost a half a pound every day on average for the last 90 days. Anyway, and that's like two quarter pounders of fat. Now, fat is good food. Fat has been created by your body for reserves to be called on when it's needed. Wow, maybe that's why you don't feel too hungry when you're autolyzing your fat. But I haven't in this whole time felt hungry once. Okay? I've been tempted every time, and usually I can control it, you know. But I mean, uh, if it's an event, forget it. This was an event, I had some stuff, okay? Eggs! Deviled eggs, you know, I gotta have them, one or two of those, you know. So, treats, you know, you can't be a fanatic, but my point is, if 15 hours or even 12 hours a day is useful, well, what's wrong with six days out of seven? And what if humanity are actually capable of operating on feast or famine? 
one, I will call it the eat all you can eat diet. But you can only eat when you're hungry. And if you're drinking all your wee wee, you never get hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I swear. How can you explain that this guy's almost dead after six days? He's got chills and numb fingers and he can't walk. And I'm still on my trampoline after three months. It ain't just big 12 meals, you know. It's something special. And I tell you, it's the urine therapy, which is the only possible difference between his starvation cure and mine. So, <clears throat> I put all my reports. This one will be number eight. It'll be cure all fast. 91 days. Maybe I'll say three months, because it's the right on the cusp. And uh, I know one guy with muscular dystrophy after the 56-day report said, well, I saw your video and I started the fast, and after five days I've dropped three, three kilos, and I've gained some muscle mass. He said, I'm going to see if I can do 40 days. Oh, neato. Well, here's my point. If you're sick or you're fat, think about being able to go on a diet without being hungry. Wouldn't that be neat? And all you got to do, and I tell people to start like this, if you're going to introduce yourself to urine therapy so you don't get puked out, have a couple of pairs. For some reason, the kidneys love pears. They will pass it along, and the first time you taste your kidney milk, your miracle water, you want it to be sweet. Okay. You don't want to be puked out. You don't want to be puked out. You want to go, oh, this is neat. I could do this all and hey, want to try? You know what I mean? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, put it in a wine glass and say, thank you, God, for 3,000 chemical components with vitamins, minerals, hormones, enzymes, stem cells, DNA, and give it a little sip. You'll be pleasantly surprised. Now, the next morning, after a night of your body repair of sleep, you'll find your miracle water, your kidney milk, is a little medicinally stronger, like Listerine a bit, okay? But if you've got a sore throat, and wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to gargle, and that last piece you could never get before you spit out, you get it just by swallowing? Mm. <laughs> what a neat cup. I tell you. So anyway, I know it's freaky, but... If you don't take this seriously, um, you're going to get a cancer from Fukushima sooner than you think. Mm -hmm. And do you want to have started it and be ready for it before it happens? Because it's probably happening now anyway. Exponential growth starts really, really small. But eventually doubles and doubles and doubles and doubles, then suddenly it gets too big. And uh, why not try and pick them off right now and get fit at the same time? There's no reason to be carrying around an extra... 20 keys of fat, imagine that. 40 pounds of butter wrapped around me and everybody thought you looked normal at the time, right? Wow, and I had 40 pounds of fat strapped around me. Well, I'm gonna just keep trying to go as long as I can and see how long before I feel hungry. And I swear, believe me, the day I actually have a growl in my stomach is the day I'm gonna figure, okay, I guess now there's autolysis enough, time to go eat. L listen to your body. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, honestly, you know, I mean, him, he's, oh, he's always feeling a little bit of hunger, but he kept his digestion alive by nibbling. Me, I don't touch it at all, and I don't have that kind of pain. That's why I got rid of 40, and he only got rid of 20. So anyway. <laughs> what about your muscle mass? Pardon? Have you lost your muscle mass? No, I don't think so. I think actually the muscle just stayed behind. Now it's much more obvious I had muscle under there, you know. Now that the fat's all gone, it looks pretty damn muscular. So, no, I don't think so. Are you drinking water? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, well, I, and I'm, and I, you know, I'm having coffee too, so I mean, I'm not fanatic. Cheap drugs. What? Cheap drugs. Yeah, yeah, cheap drugs, okay. And, uh, How much water? Ah, uh, not that much because I drink so much of my own, it's recycled, but you find that you process tons after a while when you get going. It's like a constant flushing. You're going through 16 ounces. That's a pound, you know what I mean? I can drop five pounds of water if I didn't drink it all right back, you know, but I do. So that it really, you know, I mean, sometimes you're doing like 16 ounces every hour for a few hours. It's weird, you know, and then it settles down. But uh, if you're drinking some water and all of your urine, 
You should be accumulating. Well, I yes, I guess I spit a, I guess I spit a bit or I uh, sweat a bit or yeah, and actually some I save for foot baths. So you know, I mean, it's not. I don't get it all. Maybe I get eighty percent. Okay. Yeah. So uh, is there anything else here? My last bit. Nope. That's pretty well it. So I've finished my third month and I'm going to keep trying to see how long I can go until I'm hungry and uh, cure all fast on YouTube or all my reports. But most people should need more than this last bit of the whole story. Yes. Hello. 35 volunteers um, been asked to walk 100 kilometer from one village to Stockholm in 10 days without eating anything, just drink. And uh, they were, the first group was strictly vegetarians. They weren't really fat or anything. And um, all the doctors, everybody said that this whole um, exercise is futile and they're going to be delirious and, and whatever. In, in a third, fourth day, that's impossible. Anyway, the long story short, they went through, they could drink as much as they like, but they never eat a gram of anything. In a 10 day, they arrived and every one of them were healthier than before. <laughs> and they all made it. And exercise now, is supposed to be good for you on yeah. the fast. Now, the, the interesting story was the next day, because of all the controversy at the beginning, on the, next, the, the last day on the university made published this paper, and it's appeared once, and it's totally disappeared from any publication whatsoever. <laughs> of course. And uh, because of the food industry and uh, how many calories you have to eat a day to be yeah, practical. Yeah. So 10 years later, the same university retested. Now, this time the volunteers were, it's about 35 people who were meat eaters and fat people, young people, old people, over 60s. They also all made it. But this time they actually tested, they went with a big boss that was in the 60s, went with a big bus, and every day they took a blood sample from them, and they could drink, actually, juice. Okay. But the second day, everybody dropped the juice. They strictly started to drink only water, and they also all made it. A few of them had a splint and, mm -hmm. and a busted feet because she, they need, used to walk that much. But um, they just proved it. It's not the vegetarians, but but the whole metabolism of the body, like we designed to fast. That was the whole idea of proving you don't have to eat every day 15,000 calories or whatever the they, 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 they fast, fast food industry is. Unless you have two big bags. <laughs> but the interesting thing is both of, both of this study has been totally hushed up and it disappeared in one day after when it's been published. That reminds me of the acrylamide story. About 15 years ago, the Royal Academy of Sweden announced that they found like 700 times the legal limits of acrylamides in foods. And acrylamides are every carbohydrate cooked at high temperatures, like French fries, yeah. like baked potatoes, like baked lasagna. If you boil your potato, great. Bake it, cancer. Wow. And I saw one article, then it disappeared. And that might be the greatest cancer causer of all acrylamides in our food. So yeah, of course, if they find that fasting makes people stronger, it goes against the fact you need food. As a matter of fact, funny story, when you're sick and you're a kid and you want to go to bed and you're not hungry, what does mama do? Eat, eat, keep up your strength, right? Yeah. The very opposite of worse, what should be worse, done. Worse Another guy said, leave the kid alone, let him go fast until he's better. Because force feeding him is the worst you can do. So we were actually all brought up wrong, thinking that you have to feed a patient to keep his strength up, when starving him might keep his strength up. Yes, Bill? In Africa, in the backwoods there, that's what they use it. Urine therapy. So what else? hundreds of years ago. What else? Right? It's <laughs> called the golden fountain urine therapy. You want to go and let them. Well, it's not so golden when you're not eating. Okay, thanks. No, 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 just straight. straight. That's why I'm down Tasteless. here. What about uh, vitamins? You mentioned. Yeah, I take some vitamins. I want to get this over with work. Yeah. Yeah. I'm warm because I can't drink. John, I appreciate you. This is a, that, that's a hell of a breakthrough.
Is. You doing that, this is your first shot at it? No. I started 30 years ago. And you let me tell you, <laughs> and let me tell you that it was, it was tough. Uh, John has always gone against the stream. He's used to it. He's a strong guy. Well, I'm going with my stream now. No, but, yeah. <laughs> but he's always <laughs> gone against <laughs> public opinion because he's, he went his own way. So he's the perfect guy to do this. When I started as a chiropractor 35 years ago, I got the book. I shared the book with a few people, and I'll tell you what, I became anathema just for showing people the book, really The Water Armstrong. of Life by yeah. Armstrong. I started on it, my wife then started out with Sylvia, my uh, father-in-law started on it, and within 10 days his pot, his, his, what do you call them, the hemorrhoids were gone, his, his what do you call them, ulcer was gone, and it was one other thing I don't remember what he had, but that, those were gone. I remember my mother had been a nurse, she read the book, she says, I can't do that, because she could, if she went to the bathroom, left and came back to the bathroom, she could still smell her urine, because she had a bladder infection. I said, Mother, read the book again. She read the book again. She started. Within two days, her urine is like you said. It's like well water. So it's clear. So there was a lot of stigma. And you know, I, was, I tried to do it the right way. You know, no food. And good. I, I've, a couple times I've gone six or eight days. And the last time I went uh, about six months ago, I went ten days. My mother at 95 did two one-week fasts on urine this past year. At 95, well, there's probably not anybody in here that can keep up with her. She just moved out west to live with my sister. My sisters are afraid that she's going to need care. <laughs> <laughs> she'll be looking They're going to need care, and she'll be looking after <laughs> me, I promise you. Yeah, she's a great lady. I've met her many times. So, I just want to say <laughs> that I've done it, and it took me a while, but I just realized that there's only one waste channel in your body. Waste goes out through the sewage system. What house has two? And your kidneys are a filtration system mm. to remove excess from the blood. So urine is literally plasma. So if you've licked a cut and licked your own blood, you licked urine, essentially. So may as well get over it. Because like you said, John, and if anybody's following some of the things on YouTube, we could be in serious shortages in food and things like that. So if you already know about this, and if they don't have water, fresh water, you, you've got a secret. You'll stay alive when other people die. If you know enough to use your urine. This is not news around here, actually. In uh, the 50s, I believe, there was a mining cave in, in the coal mines in uh, the East, East Coast, Coast, right? East Coast, Coast. yeah. And after five days, they gave up on some of the guys. that were, They kept digging, but they thought nobody else was coming out alive, because five days is max. Eight days, they brought guys out who consumed their urine, and when they examined them, they were in better health. <laughs> so that's not news, like way back. But they fasted too, probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, didn't <laughs> they had no food and no yeah. water. They the, only the Armstrong miracle. Urine. So, yeah, so. That airplane crash up north, the same thing. Yeah. You got the tip off. Don't waste that first passage of urine. You're in a compromised situation. Better yet, start training yourself now. Because tough times are going to come. We're going to be short of food and water. So it was uh, an article that I read. Uh, actually, it was in the news. Uh, a uh, person survived an earthquake. He was under the rubble. He was trapped under there with his wife and daughter. His wife and daughter died, and he lived because he drank his own urine. And he wouldn't. You and see how much confirmation there is right among you here? Yeah. So, like, look into it. <clears throat> this is a big tip off and I really appreciate it because I only went 10 days and I'm trying to figure out now why did I quit because I felt so good so hearing you tell it has got me I'm, I'm going back on because there's a couple of little problems that I know would clear up right away I do that 
you know, the problems the scuba divers have. They're living in urine most of the time in a wetsuit. The bladder doesn't last very long. But we don't seem to have any wounds on our feet. Our feet are always healed because the urine's sitting in our inside of the suit. Goes down. Yep. We piss ourselves regularly while we're underwater. Oh, yeah, really? Okay. Seriously. Ask the diver that knows. By the <laughs> way, the front row. one of the things that Armstrong recommended is that you age the urine five days that you're going to rub on the skin. Now, it's, it, it's a bit rank. By the way, I've got some that I've aged for a lot longer than that. Me too. i got years some old. Some mine is like wine. Like three three <laughs> years old or something, you know. Do you keep it in the fridge? Or where do you, where do you keep it? In the fridge? You really, no. Oh. no. So it's just You're either drinking it fresh right. or if you age it. Three, four days. Do you leave yeah. it to the air exposed? Or no, you put I've it in sealed it. Okay, no, so I've sealed it off. I've got some sealed. Right. Like yeah, four years. Years. Sometimes it comes out stinking horribly, and sometimes it comes out smelling like the neatest balm medicine. But even the stuff that looks clear, if you leave it in a jar, it goes brown, and you take the lid off. And <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> that clears your sinuses. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to make a comment on what John and Robert were talking about earlier. There's a book written close to 2,000 years ago, the book of John, chapter 28 talks about out of your loins will flow rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all yeah. about. John, whenever you do a fast, you starve the yeast and fungus and the protozoa out of your body first. Could be. Yeah. yeah. If and they're not desirable, I presume so. Well, yeah, they're, they're food. <laughs> all the junk goes first. They become protein. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the hybrid cells will go next. Those are the cancer cells. 